Welcome to another Tech Tuesday at FiTech, students. Today we're going to learn how AFR Learn and Trim work. So today's video, the basic idea is we're going to cover how AFR Trim and Learn work to get the AFR target out of your FITEC unit. So with that injector flow information, the computer knows how much injected fuel it needs to put in to get the right AFR out of the engine, but not everything's perfect, so we got to adjust it on the fly. So we now need to calculate how long I need to turn on the injector for each cycle. Part of that calculation is going to be the AFR target. The AFR target is a desired air fuel ratio output. We also use it as part of the input calculation so that I'm spraying the right amount of fuel based on known parameters such as injector flow rate, volumetric efficiency, and the operating conditions that are measured. I can say this pulse width needs to be so long in order to make that true. But there's going to be tolerances and stuff in the VE tables, in the sensors, in the engine itself that's going to make it so that it's not coming out exactly like that to the wideband sensor. Maybe in the middle it's going to read 13 to 1. So what do I need to do? I need to shorten the pulse width. And I do that over time and try to adjust the pulse width so that it does actually come out of the engine at that actual targeted air fuel ratio. The way the pulse widths are adjusted is, say if I'm lean, I'll increase the pulse width and keep ticking up until I reach the target of the air fuel target. And then I'll jump back and decrease and decrease until this air fuel ratio comes a little bit below the target and above the target. And I'll keep adjusting so on and so forth on the fly, in real time, continuously trying to get the air fuel ratio output to match the air fuel ratio target. The target does change based on RPM and load. Say at full throttle, I may be in 12 and a half, and cruise, I may be 14.7, at idle, maybe 13.6. So as the engine is driven, I'm continuously making adjustments. As such, you know, these, these adjustments are kind of just a generic closed loop uh, trim cycle where it's jumping up, integrating, jumping down, integrating. This jump is because there's a, uh, there's a wetness to the intake manifold, there's sensor lags. Basically, that kind of input on the pulse width will actually equal a fairly steady output coming out the wideband sensor. So as the engine's running, I'm doing this trim, but let's say I'm actually too rich and this trim ends up going way down here. What happens? with the software is we want to learn that so that we don't have to keep adjusting on the trim. We want that to just be kind of steady. It will actually go into the AFR learn. So maybe I'm at this condition where it learns down 20% and then the trim doesn't have to move anywhere. It just maybe is close to 0% trimming. You know, it'll be plus or minus following the little sawtooth pattern, but the AFR trim will be centered around zero. If I've learned it. If I haven't learned it, it may be spending time above zero, say here, or below zero, say there. But the main purpose for learning is so that eventually the trim just kind of stays near zero. But the learning will have, say, this table right here applied on top of the VE, on top of the calculation, combined with the air fuel ratio targets to get the final pulse width that varies based on load, but it produces an accurate output. The AFR Learn data in the data logging group can also show you whether you've got the right cam value by looking at the high RPM, high loads. If it's learning down, you might have a cam number that's too big at the high RPM, high loads. If it's learning way up, your cam number could be off, or you might actually be losing fuel pressure at high RPMs and high fuel flows, and you don't know it. So if I see 130s way up here, if I see 130s all around here of learning, I'm going to go and put a fuel pressure gauge on and try to figure out, is that my main problem? The fuel learn table can also expose 
problems with the engine or problems with the fuel supply system. If you see it's at idle, maybe it's going way up by 30 or 40 percent, that might mean you have a, an exhaust leak near the oxygen sensor. You may have an exhaust leak above the oxygen sensor. You may even have a misfiring cylinder. You could have a vacuum leak that's really big in one cylinder or another. But I usually look to see as long as the cam selection is correct, the fuel trim should be within range of plus or minus 20 of the base value of 100 here. For you advanced tuners, you may want to actually adjust the VE numbers for your cam fuel table in order to get the AFR learn close to 100. That way the learn's doing very little and the trim's doing very little and it's all gonna be open loop accurate. The way to adjust that would be if I'm removing 20% of learn, I may need to remove 20% of VE. That will cause the learn to come back up slowly if you stay in that operating condition. Or you can actually just reset the fuel learn values. Then you won't have to wait. If you want to reset the fuel learn values in the initial setup, there's an option to reset fuel learn. Set it to one, and then you'll have to key off and let the engine stop, let the ECU power down, It'll go through and erase all this data back to 100, and then you can start the engine back up again. So there you go with all the information that you should need to understand how the fuel injection is working. It's learning, it's trimming, and it's making the engine get the proper air-fuel ratio for that operating condition. We're going to go to the car and kind of demonstrate some of these ideas so that you get a real understanding of what's actually happening on the engine.